All right. All right, we'll see. Uh, my name's Stephen Bigmore. I'm 39 years old. I grew. I was born in 1975 and grew up in the biggest lawless estate uh, in Northern Ireland, which is called Rathcool. Rathcool was once the biggest housing estate in Europe in the 80s. I grew up there a Roman Catholic and I went to school in a, an all-Catholic school which was also in Rathcool. But because I lived in Rathcool and I lived with loyalist people, uh, I used to get bullied quite a lot in school and also out of school. Um, people in the estate used to, used to sort of beat me up every now and again just purely because they knew of what religion I was. Um, and as a result of that, um, it kind of isolated me between the two communities friends that I went to school with and also friends that I had in the Loyalist Estate of Rathkill. And as a result of, of not sort of finding my place within that community, I ended up getting involved in music um, with local musicians and a lot of local bands. I was also heavily uh, listening to Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and various bands like Black Sabbath and things like that. And because of that lifestyle um, and because there was no avenues for me really to find where I fitted in to the society of where I lived in, in the estate, I um, took to cannabis and the usage of cannabis to try and relieve stress and, and anxiety of what was happening to me in that social uh, in that social atmosphere of the housing estate where I lived. After a lot of years of um, after a lot of years of taking the taking the, the the drug, the marijuana drug, you know, I went to a, a rehab. Some people might find this funny um, to say that to say that um, I went to rehab for such a, like a, a gateway drug, yes I can understand that, but that depends on the person's mind, if they want, you know, if, if they're susceptible, if they have an addictive personality, they'll run with that. But my problem was is that sometimes I, would, I wasn't thinking analytically, so I went to get some help with that to, uh, to a rehab centre just for, for smoking marijuana. It wasn't a physical addiction, more of a mental addiction, so in my rehab over a period of six weeks what we looked at was taking notes of how I felt in that day what did I think when I got up in the morning what was the thinking what was my plans for the day and then whenever I smoked that first joint of marijuana it was what I wanted to do after that and I found that there was a certain amount of not laziness but a lack of drive it just made me tired quite a lot and didn't make me think, as I say, this, this wonderful word analytically. It didn't make me think that way at all. So after six weeks of going through an assessment of writing down things that I'd done, how I felt when I was on marijuana, how I felt whenever I wasn't on marijuana, did I miss the cravings and things they get, it helped me look to sort of judge on a daily, a daily basis what I was doing with my life and how that drug was actually affecting me mentally as well as uh, socially too. So thankfully after after a period of time that I uh, I give up, various artists have came to me over the years with alcohol problems, um, drug related problems, yes, but alcohol was actually the main thing that was driving them down. There was one artist in particular, I called his house one day to check up on him, his girlfriend was on the phone pretty upset that he had been drinking again. And I called out to his house to see if I could help them out, just have a chat, just to see if I could maybe chat to him and get through in his head and I found him in the garage and he was sitting drinking aftershave um, so when you see things like that you, you try and nurture it you try and bring people out of themselves you try and get them to be creative you try and get them to come out and do things you, you encourage them you fill them full of confidence not false confidence not false hope you be honest with people and you try and help them out of their addictions that guy now has beat his addiction he's, he's now a tattooist um, and a very very good artist too um, so I mean what we do in the art centre here is different workshops and things, different building exercises to try and give people the confidence to, to do things, to move on with their lives, to, to sort of uh, improve a quality of life, not just for themselves, but what they can put back into society through the experiences that they've also had in their dark addictions. So we took a, a premises here in North Street in Belfast City Centre. There was a few businesses in Royal Avenue which were going bust. Um, so what I done was I took this whole building on here, these stories, and I've moved these these people in. What we do is we give them a free space and they make a donation into the charity to keep it all going. 
So what we have here now is a, a coffee shop which brings in young people, uh, disadvantaged youths, and brings them into a, a work ethnic so they can sort of start preparing for their later in life or their careers. The guys offer barista training for making various coffees and specialty coffees and stuff. Upstairs, we, on the first floor, we have Terry Hooley's Good Vibrations Record Store. And obviously the work that Terry had done in the 60s, not so much in it, I suppose maybe in the in the 60s and especially in the 70s, people's addictions were the troubles. A lot of people addicted to that. And Terry could maybe tell you <coughs> tell you a little bit more about that through the Good Vibrations movie that was made about his life. But he has his record store upstairs. And we also have an art gallery upstairs beside Terry's shop. You know, there's a lot of my works in there at the moment, um, which comes from the creative mind that marijuana had given me. Um, so we have an art gallery there, uh, various stuff hanging from different artists, including myself, and we also have a film screening room that doubles up. We have live performances up there as well too, and on the top floor we have rehearsal studios to nurture local young musicians, and we're putting in a, we're trying to raise some money to put in a recording facility so that we can bring out their, their first EPs and things they get to try and nurture and uh, create a product for them. Uh, again, which builds their confidence and it gives them material that they can go out and get various gigs in and around the city or in and around the province of Northern Ireland itself. So, I've created, I've created a monster. I've created a, a collaboration. <laughs>